went well. Um, you know, obviously, we focused on defense and uh, we was able to communicate, working on a little bit of transition. Um, Luke was saying that the vets were taking time to teach, teach the young guys. And I know you say that's a part of your responsibility. How important is it to establish that culture early uh, in training camp? I mean, it's very important. You know, obviously, day one's uh, the most important part of the day of the season. Uh, getting to work out this and uh, our, our habits together early, and our vets were able to communicate with the guys how to play post defense. Uh, also, we in isolation defense as well. Luke had mentioned that uh, you've been itching to get into that scrimmage more than anyone kind of mentioned it to him. Are you excited about that tomorrow? Um, I just thought we were bring it in and maybe get it down. He said put 10 minutes on the clock. I thought we were going to scrimmage, but it was just for shooting. How different is the intensity now that it's an actual practice that you guys are actually using? This is a level of focus. You know, uh, we've been here for you know, the past couple of months, but it's just been pickup funds and, and games. But now, you know, everything's critiqued and obviously filmed and uh, coaches will go back you know, this afternoon to figure out what we, do, we need to get better. Do you like to try to set things up so that you're on an opposite side from LeBron in practice? Or no, I, I, this is kind of happened today. Um, you know, obviously, it's, I think it makes it better competitive. I mean, made it more competitive for the, for the practice and for guys to see, it, see us go at it. So. And just a sense of having some young guys on either team and organizing, and is that? Yeah, because if we were both on the same team, it's harder for us to teach and explain, you know, with, with the we're on the same team. I know it's early and you're getting to know them, but how do you get a, a young, pretty quiet group to be more talkative and, and to take on more leadership? Just to lead by example, you know, um, a lot of people don't talk because they don't know what to say. And if you don't, it's best just to be quiet and until you're able to understand and catch up to speed with the guys who do know what they're talking about, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a process. No, nah, if you ask KG or my older vest, they probably t said I talk too much. So, <laughs> have they talked to you about the dress code? I mean, you're wearing a green shirt. Is that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, no, they haven't said much about the dress code. You can come in. You come as you are uh, in the beginning of practice. Green, okay. yeah. you know. uh, it's, it isn't the other green. You know, it isn't the Celtic green. <laughs> You've been in this league a long time. Anything new today? Was it uh, in terms of terminology or system or? Yeah, terminology was a little bit different, but basketball is basketball. Um, Coach uh, BQ cleared it up very quickly. LeBron and I had a couple questions, and like I said, it was it was no big deal. Can you tell that the uh, the younger guys have a, a real hunger to, to to know more, and they know they could go, go to you or LeBron and, and get this knowledge? They definitely do. You know, I've been impressed from day one. You know, a couple months back when I first got here, the young guys, um, like as I've told you guys, they reached out right away, and and they've been seeking knowledge ever since. What do you think is distinct about Luke's coaching or, or management style? He's not a yelling. He's not a yelling coach. He's he's very laid back, relaxed. You know, and I think as a coach, that's just my opinion that you know the players want to see a guy that's relaxed. You know, some guys aren't motivated as a yelling coach, or you know, everybody's wired differently. So it's you know he does a great job of you know kind of relaxing, and he hasn't been very vocal. He's let his other coaches do a lot of the talking, and uh, me in the past, I've learned that from other coaches. You know, you'd always want to have one voice. You know, guys get kind of sick and tired of you, you know day three of camp. You, know, you get the same voice over and over. So everyone, all the coaches have been very vocal. Uh, B. Shaw, B. Keith. Uh, Jesse, so it's been a, it's been a good mix up. Hey, what point you do I love to teach, so I, you know I can't say no. Um, you know, obviously I love you know, what Magic does, uh, Rob, <laughs> and then also Luke. So it's, I don't I don't want to box myself in in one particular category. Um, you know, my mentor a couple uh, a couple years ago was Danny Ainge as well, so he did it all as well. So when, when did you start to become a teacher as a as a player as opposed to a competitor? And what, like when did you re take on that role with younger players and start to share that? I've always taught. I mean, I played quarterback in high school. I played, you know, pitcher baseball. So I've always been, you know, the, the coach on the floor in any sport I played, and um, have always relayed messages to certain guys on my team. How has your approach just physically? How has that evolved over the years so that you're in the type of shape you want to be in to start camp? And how did that go? Yeah, the older you get, uh, the less time you, you probably take off during the summer. You know, it's harder to get back in shape versus just stay in shape. So I never really take a long period of time off, especially from the weight room, and, and my, and as far as my cardio. What was your final score to that shoot around? I know your team won. We beat the. Sh uh, <laughs> 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 we won. It was it was competitive. You know, we just having fun in the game. Just get a little bit competitive juices going at the end. Since we didn't get the scrimmage, we we did it as far as competition and shooting. And you know, today, a couple guys on my team shot a little bit better than the other guys on their team. That's all. Javale. Javale was, was sticking. Uh, you all, yeah, y'all were you all were here. We saw the end of practice today. Clearly, this is LeBron's team. What makes him such a great leader? Is it pedigree? Is it you know, his seniority in the NBA. And are you okay with that role that he has adopted almost immediately? I mean, it's LeBron, you know, it's, he speaks his name, one name speaks for itself. Uh, he's been a, a leader and a mentor in this league for a long time, on and off the court, you know, not just on the court. He's 
he has a blueprint off the court as well. So uh, he embraces his role. He embraces all the pressure that he's ever dealt with in his career, and he's always risen above the occasion. You were a young player on a veteran league team that expects a lot of you from the guard. You're very competitive. Does that allow you to connect better with the young core you have here and understand what they're trying to accomplish? Yeah, I think my entire journey, you know, what I went through in Boston with all the vets that, that was able to teach me and me become a sponge versus now. Uh, where I am now. You know, I've been through a lot in Chicago, Dallas, and I play with a lot of older guys and younger. So you know, everything, in life ha everything in life's happened for a reason. I believe I'm here today just to, you know, obviously mentor and continue to help this team grow as any way as possible. LeBron talked about how he's not a very patient guy. How are you in terms of that? Mm -hmm. and how do you balance that between, you know, having such a young team but also having so many bets and, and what you're trying I, to do? I'm not a patient guy either, but uh, a couple weeks back I went to church and the, the focus was patience. So uh, I'm working on it. It's something I'll always continue to work on. Uh, I think that's some people say that's why Magic, you know, you know, didn't really like coaching. His guys didn't catch up as quickly as he wanted to, and you know, you get bored with the process. But uh, growing into this league, 32 years now, uh, oh, this is part of the game. You know, everyone's not going to catch up to speed as you are. So, my job for me as a leader is to understand how to get those guys, how they're wired, how they're triggered, and how can they can learn. Well, being a dad Last helps question. you work on your patience, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely being a dad. Yeah, yeah.